afternoon, Antonia. Nice to see you. Hey, great to see you. Nate. All right, looks like Madeline dropped off. I just sent Hattie to the uh, town website for the link. Oh, I feel like I emailed it out, but. Oh, no, I didn't because I told her, but I. Now I've told her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she sent something a minute ago. Kayla, I like how you're floating in the flowers. How are things, Nate? What's this? How are things? Uh, Checking they're in. Busy. They're busy. Mm -hmm. It'll be nice when we're start trying to find a new planner for um, Ben's position. Yep. It's only Ben. Uh, What's that? It's only Ben, like, uh, you know. A year? A uh, year over 14 months. <laughs> yeah. Does that mean we lose you again? Uh, maybe. Um. Just like the kind of yeah, yeah, not, yeah, not for a while, but okay. you know, like I have um three night meetings this week, I had two last week, I think I have three next week. Mm -hmm. Just oh, yeah, just to be that's a lot. Just tell them that, like, you love us the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's interesting. The um, you know, it's like, oh, oh committees might only meet once a month, but some meet one, you know, sometimes I might meet, you know, twice, and then if you're staffing, like. A number of committees it just it adds yep. up oh yeah definitely for sure turn my sound up here that's better hi everyone hi hey sorry about see. not getting the link out i that's all right i'm just needing the baby steps today <laughs> feeling like that today too it's a long month january Long month and no snow. I know. Long and cloudy. Great, Thank God for the sun. I know. It's like this, this, you know, my brain is like, don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. <laughs> it's like, you got months, months to go. Yep. The uh, passed and, and said she wouldn't be here. So I think this is everyone. Okay, great. Hi, Madeline. I think this might be a relatively quick meeting. But, um, Nate, I wasn't following my email closely enough. Did you mention something about a demolition hearing? Yeah, I think I, did I email everyone? I forgot if I did, but uh, 1240 Southeast Street. It's um kind of in South, it is in South Amherst. It, uh, there was a fire in it um, maybe last year, a year ago. Uh, and it was like, a, it's right near the cemetery. South Amherst Cemetery. It's on. It's okay. like one kind of on the south east corner of the cemetery, opposite side of the street. And um, it's a yeah. it's a nineteenth century house. It had had like a an attached garage and a barn. And the fire started, I think, in the middle section, and it completely burned the middle section in the barn, and it also damaged the house. Um, and so it's it's been unlivable. I mean, mm -hmm. if you drive by. Uh, it's the house is standing, but I guess, you know, the insurance company, the owners, everyone's saying it's a total loss. I, I'm not, you know, and so they're looking to rebuild something new on the site. And so mm -hmm. we could hold a hearing on it or we could have an emergency demolition process uh, because it's, you know, it, you know, because of the fire. So, you know, they have to, you know, it wouldn't, the building commissioner is like, we can't administratively approve it. 
So they submitted an application recently and they, they're, you know, I think it's, I think the, um, I don't know how to ask for interior photographs, which they submitted today. And I haven't, I think tomorrow could probably deem the application complete and then, uh, you know, determine whether or not it's, you know, if they could follow like an emergency demolition process, but. Oh, so does the emergency demolition bypass us or just convenes a meeting sooner or? You know, honestly, I forget how, what the final um, verdict was. It, I think it's usually like maybe Robin, like myself and someone from the commission and a few others would then look at the site and determine if it, you know, and we used to tell people that by the time it takes uh, to get everyone together to have a meeting and a site visit is almost just as much time as going through the demolition hearing process. So, but um, I forgot how we, I thought we made a little tweak in the new bylaw and I'm not, I forget exactly okay. what it is. So. So yeah, you let us know. Yeah, I mean, so if, if we don't and it's deemed complete tomorrow, we'll have to hold the hearing, you know, in the next few weeks, well, you know, three to four weeks. Right, so it'd be a meeting just for that hearing. Probably. Yeah, I mean, I guess if we needed to, talk about anything else um shannon from pvpc had mm -hmm. been sick pretty sick i guess um at the end of the last year and so she is hoping i thought she was going to try to get it to me I, this week the a new version of the um preservation plan okay so it could be that we you know we have a few things to discuss but okay okay well it is 6.39, we're recording, so, and we have quorum, so um, we can call the meeting to order at 6.39, a uh, meeting of the Amherst Historical Commission on February 5th, 2024. Uh, I will read our preamble. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law C30A Section 18 and pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended by Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022 and extended legislature on July 14th, 2022 and signed into law on July 16th, 2022. This public meeting of the Town of Amherst Historic Commission is being conducted via remote participation. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time by technological means. A hyperlink to the hearing has been posted on the town's online calendar. So our first uh, agenda item is announcements. Um, I think we have a few things and I don't know if they go in announcements or unanticipated items. Um, um, I know that I just, I apologize, everybody. I sent it super last minute. Um, I sent an email that I received regarding whether the commission would like a non-voting counselor liaison. Maybe Nate can speak to that a little bit more authoritatively than me. Yeah, town council, you know, it's a new council and they're reaching out to boards and committees. Sometimes uh, counselors can become a liaison to you know, the boards or committees in town. They would have tried to attend the meetings, report back. And so it was asked if the commission would want one. And, you know, the meetings are open to the public. Uh, they are recorded and they're available. You know, Hilda's here. She usually reports on them. So, you know, they could always watch after the fact. Uh, you know, I, it's a matter of, you know, do we want to have someone uh, to try to come to the meetings? I, you know, some of the other committees I work with, we said, no, no we don't, we could work, make a formal request or not. And, you know, one committee said they, they didn't think that it was, it was necessary just because of the fact that, you know, if they're, you know, if we need to, we could always invite uh, a counselor specifically or that the meetings are available otherwise. Um, does anybody have any thoughts about that? Madeline, you're shaking your head. <laughs> I agree with. The same way as those other uh, committees that I don't think we really need somebody, but open to discussion. Madeline, you were you were hard to hear. I could hear you, but yeah. I don't know if it's if if it's something with your microphone. Pretty soft, yeah. <laughs> I 
I had my volume up really high. Yeah, I mean, my only thought was just whether it would be useful for somebody from the council to actually, I mean, historic preservation uh, practices aren't necessarily kind of commonly known by the public and whether it would be useful for somebody to um, join us and have a sense of what we do and how we discuss things when things do end up coming before the, the council, like particularly with CPA, but demolition delay was a fact too. And I mean, it's just a request, like they don't really participate. They just kind of are a liaison and, and, and create a clearer channel to the town council potentially. I, th I think my thoughts were reading it all very quickly <laughs> was that it, it seemed like a good idea. Um, if the town councillors have a time and interest, you know, uh, which I doubt, <laughs> time wise yeah. they have because yeah. it's I know it's a pretty heavy heavy load um but I I'm not I would vote yes if it comes to that based on the emails that you sent Robin um I have no no objection I think it's a the more eyes on what's going on the better yeah I mean Robin I do agree with what you said I think you know when we were uh the commission was updating the bylaw the demolition bylaw you know the preservation bylaw uh, I know some um, members of the council didn't really understand its purpose or, you know, what it, maybe the benefits of it. And so I still think there's a misperception that historic preservation is only for like the highbrow architecture, you know, the, you know, the pinnacle of the Victorian era and everything else is not really worthy or, you know, it's like every, only one, one, one property from each design or something. And, and I think the ideas of preservation have changed. And so, you know, it could be that um, maybe we, maybe we, maybe the commission says, you know what, if there's, if a counselor has time and is interested, we, yeah, we'd like it. And, you know, I don't want to, I guess, you know, that would be the next step is if we did that and then we, maybe Robin, there'd be a follow-up, uh, there could be a follow-up discussion. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm comfortable with that. Antonio, Michaela, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I, my only concern would be the difficulty of scheduling with them, but it's that I saw that the attendance is not mandatory. So um, it seems like they could basically have the responsibility for watching the recorded session on their own time and report to the council as needed. So I think it's a good idea too. And I'd be happy to have a liaison. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it could be beneficial. Um, but also like I think due to the nature that they are recorded would help with like the practical aspect and like of making it happen but also not necessarily like I don't think it's a, a thousand percent necessary but like it would is always helpful another eye yeah and it sounds like our vote just our vote just uh, says sure if somebody's interested it doesn't necessarily guarantee or require that anyone come over from the council Right. Yeah. The, um, you know, we wouldn't typically schedule, you know, if there was, if we had a liaison and they really wanted to attend and, you know, there's always a conflict at our monthly meetings. It's like, Oh, maybe, <clears throat> every, you know, once every few months, we could change our meeting to allow them to attend. I just, you know, typically we wouldn't schedule, um, you know, for their, because of their, um, you know, what their, what, you know, what they could or couldn't attend. And so I think maybe in right. the response, Robin, you could write and say that we typically meet on, you know, whatever it is, Mondays or Tuesdays, whatever we think might be for the next year. Right. And just give them the time and yeah. Okay. Um, so I learned a trick at a commission meeting that I went to uh, where the chair says, the chair will entertain a motion to affirm a request for town liaison. This takes all the pressure off you guys to create a motion. <laughs> the chair will entertain a motion uh, uh, to affirm a request for a town liaison, uh, town council liaison to the historical commission. I I second second it. Yeah, I second you would so good about that thing, right? well, I would propose it. Yes, sorry. Yes, right. uh, yes. Yeah. So so I I, yeah, uh, do, I have a, do I have a second to the motion? How do you guys move the motion forward? I'll second. Okay. So uh we'll have a roll call vote uh to affirm uh a request for a liaison from the town council to the historical commission by Antonia. 
Uh, I or nay. <laughs> I, 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 I. I. <laughs> I. Michaela. I. Madeline. I. I. And I vote I as well. So that's five zero. Okay, great. Nate, um, before we move on, can you give me the address for the barn in near the cemetery in South Amherst? I was trying to be a good doobie and pay attention properly and not multitask, but do you have that address again? <laughs> sure, it's, it's, tw yeah, it's 1240 Southeast. 1240, thank you. Southeast yeah, like I said, if you drive by, uh, it, it may not be apparent. I think the exterior is in pretty good shape, but it's you know, the interior. But, Inside, yeah. okay, thanks. Okay. Um, so, um, other announcements, Nate? Other announcements? You know, I'd emailed you two. One was, um, um, oh, yeah, uh, the um, preservation awards. You know, there's um, yeah, I was going to stick that since it's one of our one and five year goals. So okay, stick yep. it under there. All right. And then I, I know that. we had um, we have a site visit, but we have that further down. So I don't think there are other. I don't think there are other announcements per se. Oh, actually, I have one more announcement. Um, the APNI annual meeting. I think that's their name. Um. I can't remember what the um because I'm doing this off the top of my head. This is a um architectural preservation, I think is the AP um a group. Um they have really interesting sessions um all over the region. Like they had one in upstate New York on um historic window preservation, and they're having their annual meeting at UMass uh in early March. Um, so I'm going to make a note to send you guys out. Maybe I already did. You did. Um, already. Oh, yeah. Link to the program. There's a, um, a campus tour, um, I think at three o'clock on Friday. Um, you know, the rest of it is kind of very particular to actual, um, um, real conservation in terms of preservation, like real physical architectural stuff. Um, that's their focus, but, um, I don't know. Hetty and I went to uh, Doka Mama, which was the um, um, modern architecture conference. They're really fun things to go to if you have time, just to kind of let the information wash over you. So, um, but did everybody get that email? I know I sent it to Hetty, but I don't know if I sent it to everybody else. Anybody? No? Yes? No? I'll send it again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right. So that's. Um, that's the end of announcements, unless anybody has anything else. No. Um, Madeline, oh, I you saw want... a, um, mm -hmm. I saw a, there's a, um, just a lecture on embodied carbon in existing buildings in mid-March through the Western Massachusetts AIA. I can, I'll send that around. Great, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, moving along. Um, so discussion of our one year and five year goals. Um, we have preservation plan comments. I mean, I know we got an executive summary. Nate, do you want to speak to that a little bit more? It uh, looked I mean, good. Yeah, I think if, you know, again, if we had comments, I would just, you know, individual commission members could send them to me and I can forward them to PVPC. And, uh, okay. and then I guess, was that a, was that a, a um a PDF? I think it Yeah, I and mean, that was just two pages, right? Yeah. I think they did a good job. I mean, my only formatting uh issue is that at some point it just turns everything as an uppercase, which is a little <laughs> but other than that, it looks good. <laughs> I'm just very yeah, excited about okay. preservation. <laughs> Go ahead, Hetty. They seem to get everything we mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's brief, so I, I guess that's good. You know, um, it says, you know, key actions and um, goals. Yeah, I, don't know, I guess, I mean, if we, 
I mean, Robin, if we thought that maybe um, the second page could be formatted a little differently, I mean, that's, I'm, you know, I think that's fair. Okay. I mean, the idea would be that, you know, we could use this in presentations or it can be, you know, this, you know, could be emailed around. And if, yeah. we, if we like it, great. If we have comments, you can send those to me. Um, okay. Um, so just thinking, I was going to say, yeah, okay. I had a thought, but it went in one side of my brain and out the other. Um, so we're still in a state. So Shanna has been well, so presumably she's taking time to rest and we'll hear from her again about when the next iteration would be. Yeah, I emailed her the discussion uh, the commission had the other month. I told her, you know, like start on, you know, 29 minutes and 40 seconds, or yep. whatever it was, and all the comments. And she said she was working through everything. And I think she had said last week she was trying to get something to me this week. So, okay, you know, it'd be great to send that out. And hopefully it's in, um, it looks good. And we could just, you know, look at it at the next meeting. And maybe, maybe that's a final plan. Okay. Um, oh, I know what I was going to say. I, I can send her... Um our one and five year goals just right. you know if that's useful for her i don't think i've done that uh, okay um and then in terms of our one and five year goals um i prepared but i realized as i was looking at it i didn't realize if i'd send it out or not did i send you guys um committee assignments mm -hmm. yes okay great with all those fancy colors that i did yeah <laughs> so um, the next step is for us to sort of connect with whoever we're um, lined up with and, and start to try to, particularly the one-year goals, try to move things forward. I will confess to having had a slow January and not um, turning my attention to, I, I did make some progress on um, documenting 140, so 140, 140 Southeast Street, and um, we did make progress there. And after uh, Hetty and I went for a site visit, we took pictures and then I did further research. Um, I contacted um, uh, Amir um, to talk about being able to be present at the demolition to see if one, we could salvage um, the floorboards. Um, Jan Mar Marquardt had said she thought she could find, I can't remember if she said she thought she could find a use for them. I think so. And um, also um, Eric Rodoya uh, thought he could find um, somebody who would be interested in the um, granite um, facing that surround the foundation, um, but also to take a look at the um, framing of the structure inside, which might give us a better indication of, of its actual um, its actual date of construction. And um, Amir was very um, responsive to that and said he would let us know before they were planning to take it down. And so that could be an exciting event. Um, and at the close of that, my goal is to have a, a form B to submit to the town and, and MHC so that that building is documented and we can close the chapter on it. Um, preservation, the other, so that was one timely matter. Um, preservation nominations. Uh, I know that um, Hetty was the only one who indicated an interest and I know that she's overwhelmed with many things. So we do have two um, award programs that are going on right now. Um, the first is the is the Conk Award. I can't remember the name of it, Nate. Um, and there was some interest in uh, the commission um, nominating um, Annika Lopes, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, for her work. Uh, I looked... I had thought that too, and I looked into it, and it looked like she had received award or, oh, the award a couple of years ago. Um, but um, the more important, or the well, the more salient fact is that we need somebody who'd be willing to prepare a nomination. So if it's going to come from the historical commission, we need somebody to prepare the nomination, and then I, we probably would have to meet after it's prepared to just kind of review it and approve it. Um, what is this think, award ceremony? Sorry. Oh, um, this. It's the Amherst Historical Society. Yes, thank you. 
it's their award punch like the shell and um i took a look at everything and and had every intention of trying to figure it out but i i think it's it's really like a partnership between us as the commission and whoever it is we want to nominate sort of creating this conversation preferably online in some kind of shared software where you have them respond to all of the issues that are needing to be put into the proposal to nominate them and there's a separate piece of software that is used um wait a minute am i getting mixed up between I think the that's the preservation sorry. mass yeah it's, sorry i'm getting the two mixed up oh i knew i would but anyway i'm talking about the preservation massachusetts award and that is a separate piece of software so it, it just yes. means that you have to be up on exactly what is required in order to nominate them. And and for all I know, it may be much less um, complicated for the Amherst Historical Society Conch Shell Award. So I'm just going to forward the email to everybody right now. Um, uh, it just says, this award goes to a person, business, or organization that has contributed to the preservation and awareness of Amherst history, has demonstrated a commitment to education and interpretation, and has used innovative and creative methods to showcase Amherst historical resources. Um, oh, but let's see. Yep, sorry, we missed the boat on this one. Deadline was January 27th. So, and I will say that I think when I looked at this one, um, Deborah Bridges and Annika Lopes did receive the award in 2022. So last year it was Cindy Harbison. Um, okay, that's that one. Uh, and then Preservation Mass, the deadline is late February, I think. And that's what Hattie was just talking about. Um, and there we were talking that Preservation and Mass awards are statewide and there are five different categories. And several years ago, I had wanted to nominate the Amherst, uh, North Amherst Farm for their preservation project. Um, this would be the last year that they would need, that they could be nominated because it has to be completed within the last five years. Um, but without somebody to do the legwork, um, you know, that's just, that's just part of the process is, you know, if we can do it, we can do it. If we can't, we can't. So apologize on this other one um but i think it came in after our last meeting and the deadline was for this one so um going forward are any other members interested in working on nominations they'll come around this time there's usually a program from um, mhc as well um so we can just kind of keep it in our calendar to expect expect it around the beginning of the year um but Anyone else interested in that type of work or we'll just leave it in Hetty's court? Okay. Um, and then I don't really have anything else to report on our goals this month. I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts or questions about moving forward or um, if we wanna just try to come, I'll try to collectively take a look at what we're thinking, what we think we'd like to accomplish and, and come next month with questions or comments about that process. Any thoughts? Uh, excuse me, I think that'd be good to keep it on the agenda as a running item. Okay. You know, some of these things, I, um, I, I am trying to get a, um, a draft or a template for the preservation restriction, working with uh, mm -hmm. town attorneys. And so we have some mm -hmm. EPA projects that are, you know, we're kind of holding some retainage funding until it's done. And then you know, we have a whole new round that'll be getting funding next year. And so it'd be nice to have uh, that ready. And so that's always been kind of a slower piece of the project. So, um, you know, I've done some work to have a template and I'm sure it needs to get reviewed, but yeah, I'm trying to get that going. Okay, great. Any other thoughts or comments for this evening's meeting on our one and five year goals? Okay. Hearing none, um, let's see, we have updates, um, documentation on 4555 South Pleasant Street 
And I think we also want to try to schedule a site visit there. Is that right, Nate? I think hetty has been doing the documentation. And um, Nate, you're going to try to coordinate a site visit for any of us who want to attend. Right. And then um, Ed Wolfer had done some research. I think I sent that around to the commission. Did. Yep. Okay. So, Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I you know, Hedy, you can have a you can have the floor in a minute. What I was going to say is, I think, uh, you know, what I spoke with a building commissioner about how we could condition demolitions, and so, you know, there's a few ways we could go about it. And this one, we had issued a six uh, the commission issued a six month delay and said, oh, it'd be great if you had more documentation, um, you know, but some some owners or developers might wait the delay and not really provide much, and then. The, the delay expires. Uh, he he actually thinks that if he thinks the commission could say you can take down the building or whatever only after you've provided these things and actually issued the delay with conditions so that you know maybe the first thing is an updated inventory form, you know, uh, interior exterior photographs, you know, is it I, I don't know if we want to require measured drawings, but you know we could say architectural drawings or renderings, and so. He's of the opinion that the way the bylaw is structured now, different than that was, you know, the previous version, we could actually issue a, you know, for anyone, for any of them, it might be as effective as saying, you know, you're, 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 um, you can demolish the building after you meet these conditions. And, you know, it might be that it, it's, it's appropriate for, you know, a fair number of the demolition applications and maybe others we put a full year on because we really need that time to see if there's different alternatives, but if, you know, for instance, in this case, if the commission seemed like it was willing to allow demolition, uh, a different strategy could be to require these things of the applicant. And then, you know, we can also still have a site visit and everything, but, you know, it would put kind of some of the, the onus on them to do this. And so, you know, and I think maybe the goal for me would be like, let's get an updated inventory form for every property, at least in photographs and other things. And so, you know, some owners and developers don't have the resources to do the research uh, and that's why a delay is important because it might also then be on the commission or staff to do that. Uh, but I think we could gauge that, um, you know, for every for every application. And I think that's just a different way. It's a different approach than we've had in the past. And so that's incredibly good news, Nate, to hear you talk like this. Yeah. Um, and especially given how close these buildings are to the center of town of Amherst Center, um, I'm very heartened to hear that as a kind of way of proceeding um, because where I've got to is, is I feel like there's still a lot of questions to be answered. And I also feel that the building that is at the far back of the site, so it's the rear L, but it's the L of the L, <laughs> um, is in really good shape. And if we, if we could get a condition report on the, structural integrity and uh, finishings of that building it would it would be helpful and um i'm still you know really sort of in the weeds with this performance space that was used by the sorority that ed wilford talks about and the people at special collections at ms college talk about um and some it's documented as on the third floor of the Cutler building and then it's documented that, but actually you walk onto the, you walk up uh, to the second floor in fretted instruments and then you go up these stairs into the back to see the space, another maybe half level really, which is what the developers are struggling with in terms of their proposals for the site, the apartments. Um, and that's where this space is. And the more I dig, the more I find, but I also feel like I'm not at the end point of, you know, what exactly is here. You know, it's a little bit like 140 Southeast Street with what we saw there at that house. You know, it'd be really nice to be around when, you know, the, the wrecking ball comes to to see what's to see where things actually are located you know drawings would be another way at the moment we've got photographic evidence we've got documentary evidence we've got oral history evidence but i feel like we're not we're not in good shape enough to tell the, the story of 
of what really is going on there. And it's it's a really cool story for Amherst College, but they own they 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 have an, a vested interest in what's going to be happening at that building. So maybe maybe it's sort of not that important. But as I said, I'm heartened by what you're saying. Um, I have a couple thoughts. My first thought is um, with, with the demolition delay structured the way it is. Um, I mean, I think that, I think my feeling is that I wanna tread carefully between documentation and, and kind of onerous requirements. And um, doc most documentation can happen after the fact, like after the building comes down. Um, so, and I and I don't know if if we were tabling uh, a discussion or a, around a permit, making a decision, like saying that, like we don't have enough information to decide whether or not to, you know, allow this permit or you know impose a delay. Um, I think that would be the moment to come in for something like um, a conditions report. But I feel like, um, I mean, I, you know, I, um, as I'm learning, I'm facing this in my work too. Like you can go down a lot of rabbit holes and, you know, the history is so fascinating, but there's just a reality of the process that's underway. And, you know, the fact that not everything can be saved. So I'm, Curious if, you know, saying like, well, you can't take down the building unless you, you know, complete a, a, a structures report, but whether that would pass the legal test, like that would be my first question, you know, and then the second question is, is that necessary? And then my third thought is just, you know, I sort of feel like I'm, I'm gearing myself up to be the one to kind of, or not the one, but like to start to move us toward being able to quickly either, you know, either leaning on members of the community or who are really good at this type of research to um, to do quick documentation um, and and move things forward um, in a way that like we can, you know, keep moving on. <laughs> Um, and uh, because, you know, it's so easy to, like I said, it's so easy to go down these rabbit holes. And um, I don't want, I wouldn't want to see um, the process become bogged down in a way that would, you know, as, even as a preservationist, I wouldn't want to see the process be bogged down in a way that would become onerous for, for developers. So I've, you know, kind of, I want to recognize that, you know, there's a lot, of, I mean, what documentation do we absolutely need to do before something is rubble? And I think the reason why, I mean, I think that the um, the um, the 45 or 55, whichever one it is, <laughs> South Pleasant Street, you know, is, you know, is, is curious physically and so is 140 South uh, Southeast Street. And so there are good arguments for, you know, if we could kind of get in there behind the walls, but I think you have to have pretty specific goals in mind. So those are all my thoughts. And, and I, I think my last thought was just that um, I'm happy to do this kind of work documenting things. I think it might be challenging for them not being in the field to bring to us what we want them to bring to us in a certain period of time where somebody like um, um, our wonderful, you know, people who who are wonderful volunteers outside the commission or um, members of the commission um, could probably do a pretty quick turnaround of of the essentials of what we need to know. That makes sense. Other thoughts? <laughs> Nate, you're shaking yeah, your head a little. <laughs> I'll just you know the building commissioner did suggest that. Yeah, so you know who knows legally someone might argue with it, but um, you know if there's a reason for it, and so you know. The building commissioner said it could also be that the commission, you know, you could continue a hearing for three months and right. say, you know what, we we don't have enough information on this. Uh, we want a structures report and a little bit more research. And so, you know, I I, I know, you know, I, I I agree, Robin. It's a balance, and sometimes I feel like applicants will, you know, they'll um, they might take some pictures and they might do a little bit of research, and other times it seems like they just they don't, right? They just they're not right, that interested. Right. Uh, and it, it's hard a lot to, of motivation. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to determine what the level of their capacity is, but I, yeah. In this case, the developers have done some research and I think it was 
John of John of Coon Riddle, who, um, you know, says in a um, article in the Daily Hampshire Gazette that the H Hastings building is by William Fenno Pratt. Um, so even though that's not going to be demolished, you know, obviously the two, the, the elements together make up a, a sort of grouping of buildings, you know, that, that are connected through this new stairwell. I think, you know, Pratt is a really important architect in Amherst, <laughs> having designed pretty important buildings for the, for the town. And, you know, maybe we, we need to just be sure, you know, that we're taking care of that, of that building. Um, I, you know, and that, um, you know, I was a little disappointed, I have to say, with the design review board, um, who really only commented on the colors of the new building. I know that that's nothing to do with our purview, <laughs> but I feel like um, we want to get this right. And and I, I don't think we're at that point. I, I, I found some really wonderful photographs of the early artwork that Michaela was concerned about back in earlier discussions about this property, uh, these two properties. Um, so I'd, I'd like to kind of think, have us think about the space in terms of its history, in terms of public art in Amherst. Um, it looks like we're going to lose all of that. Um, so it just, it, it's just another layer of the documentation that I think it, 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 it's, would be useful to have. Um, yeah, no, I think that there's, I mean, I think that everything, I think one of my goals going forward is sort of everything that comes before the, the, the commission, you know, and like you're saying that, you know, the Hastings building touches on this one that's going to be demolished. Um, you know, it's, it fits within our goal to update our inventory. Mm -hmm. um, and so all those pieces are great and let's get them down on paper and either either we're creating a file that stays with the town or we're developing a full form B and that we're moving through kind of quickly and effectively. I did want to say that I'm really glad that you mentioned the design review board because, um, you know, Hattie and I just were chatting between ourselves um, about the proposed design. And I realized that um, we've never really had that discussion as a commission. And there are a couple of different angles. One is that we do have a representative to the design review board, and we do have the opportunity as a commission to um, try to more proactively talk about these buildings that are coming in and how they interact with the historic environment. Yeah. So that's one thing. Um, and then the second kind of more aggressive option that I think we'd have to be kind of more confident with um, would be to say, if a particular building was coming down and something was replacing it, we we get into this kind of these kind of weeds where we say, well, we can't really decide whether it should come down or not based on what comes next. And that's kind of true. That's not really our charge. But at the same time, my understanding in working with Chris Skelly was that we can say it's not our charge, but we're going to impose a 12 month delay. But if you'd like to have a delay and sooner, we'd be happy to engage with you over design. And again, like this is a much more proactive and and I'm not sure that we would want to make that step, but that's potential to say, we'll shorten your delay if you give us the opportunity to work with you on design. And I don't think you have even had a building maybe before this one where we've wanted to have that kind of power. And now that we've already passed um, a six month delay on and, and not imposed that for uh, South Pleasant Street, we're not having that discussion now, but I think the design review board is important and that we've, I don't know that we've said as a commission that we'd like to talk about how, and, and I think Madeline maybe can speak more effectively to this or Hetty, of like, how do we um, as a commission want to have a role in terms of talking about having both new architecture and also have new architecture that talks to the old architecture, yeah. like in the way that the Jones library was, you know, was Yeah, developed. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't have anything like definitive to say, but I just want to share my thoughts that I, you know, building like that is, 
really valuable for the whole like kind of the land the cultural landscape of the street it just adds variety and kind of texture and something different and it has this sort of scale that is at the street level and it's different materials and and so you know those are part of the the character of the street and that's our purview is like to protect the sort of feeling, the sense of place, uh, especially of just this like really important downtown street. So, I mean, I think that it definitely is. I mean, that's why I would value a building like that. Um, I'm not quite as interested in sort of doc. I mean, I, I support what everyone believes, but I don't really really need to document it and sort of like put it in a drawer but i just want to make sure that you know it's it's i'm more interested in just making sure that the scale and sort of the feeling the sense of place is is continued with with whatever comes next and like to yeah i think infill is definitely something that we're interested in as well And so, yeah, so I would, I would presume, yeah, I think it would be great to like sort of guide the, guide those decisions as well, if we can. Yeah. Um, do you want to just kind of weigh in on what the design review board does and Pat's role there? And I like, don't correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember getting a lot of sort of feedback on what, what's going on there in terms of what's important to this commission. Yeah, I think... You know, the town has hired Dotson and Flinker to develop downtown design standards, uh, streetscape standards, and architectural standards. And that's something that I'll be really starting uh, maybe this month or next month. And, you know, the commission can be involved in that as, you know, part of a stakeholder group with other boards and committees. And so you know, I think that'll be an opportunity to talk about what, you know, what are the architectural uh, elements and design features that we'd want to see in new buildings. And so, you know, is it, something about the rhythm of windows and patterns of open space and scale and all these things, relative massing proportions. And so, you know, I think that would be really important. So, you know, for instance, they mentioned that um, we've had one meeting with them that, you know, Kendrick Place, uh, you know, often is used in visual preference surveys and people don't like that building. And it could be that, you know, it doesn't have um, a roof line, right? Um, it, you know, it doesn't have any cornice or detail. Some of the windows are oddly, um, I don't want to say they're misaligned, but, you know, they have a different pattern than uh, older buildings. And so, you know, within the context of Amherst, it's like, oh, could a few changes on that building, maybe a stronger sign band between the first and second floors, you know, different things. If there's like four or five tweaks to that building, would that be enough um, guidance and standards to help that relate better to Amherst? And so mm -hmm. I'm hoping that's what they're going to kind of address. It's going to, it's, it's going to be a multi-month process. Uh, and so that, like I said, I think that's a really great time for the commission to get involved. You know, and I think some of the questions for me would be, what is the design review board? What's their role after these standards are, um, you know, completed? So the design review board, it's an advisory board. You know, there's a design review district in downtown for any town projects. They review the project. Uh, there's a design, there's design review principles in the zoning bylaw, and then there's a design review handbook online. And it talks, you know, about basic, things like I just mentioned, kind of rhythm, pattern, massing. Um, and they, you know, they can provide comments on development. So it's an advisory review that would go to the permitting board, in this case, the planning board. And so, you know, their review of uh, the new building at 5545 South Pleasant, you know, they focused on a few things. They didn't focus on a lot. And it could have been that, you know, the building isn't highly visible from the street, but, um, you know, so, it, it really, you know, I think it depends on, you know, kind of how, you know, what, what kind of how they're empowered to look at something. So, you know, there's an architect or two or had two architects on the board. Um, there have been, you know, and people with different experience. So it might be just, you know, helping them, and they've been on it for a little bit, but helping them understand what they can, how they can comment on it. You know, typically the design review board, most often it's like looking at sign changes to downtown businesses or, you know, they're going to put outdoor dining out. What does kind of the outdoor dining look like? Uh, you know, new lighting. It's I, I feel like in the last 
um, probably two or three years, they haven't really looked at, you know, it's maybe only been one or two buildings, new buildings. So oftentimes it's more about, you know, additions or, you know, smaller changes. So it just, you know, I don't, it could have been like a new, you know, their new members or just how do they look at a new building? But so for the commission for this one, if you wanted, we could meet in March and we could actually have a discussion about the new building and, you know, and the, with a goal of writing a memo to the planning board. So I know that they're trying to get in front of the planning board in March for permitting for, you know, for the land use permit and the commission could, uh, could take it up as, you know, we could ask the applicant to give a presentation or we just take it upon ourselves to look at it. Okay. Um, I mean, like one question would be who would be writing the memo. Like there's no point in having the meeting if we don't have anybody. Here. And I, I just can't dedicate time to that right now. Oh, even I, I'd rather. Year. Would it be something that would fall in your coordinate or? I mean, it can. Yeah. I think that, you know, if we, what I'd, what I'd like to, in the end, structure the the vote with, you know, whether it's like a dozen and a half dozen, whatever kind of key points, you know, is it materials? Is it, uh, you know, building height, certain things. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that, that can be conveyed. I can do that. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Any other thoughts or comments on that? Antonia? Um, one question I had, I guess this is more like for the future and similar, um, I guess, demolition hearings. Um, is one of my my agenda items was like the signage um, for the town. Um, mm -hmm. How like how would I should I go about doing that? Would that still apply in this case or since it already ha happened? Yeah, I think Nate, this was something that I had brought up. Um, for potential interest for commissioners to have signs before a demolition hearing. <laughs> um, and I think I, I put an example sign. It was that the example sign was from Annapolis and it was actually for, a, I don't know, it might've been for historic district hearing, but it was, you know, this substantial sign that, you know, they, re, they, they reuse place to place, you know, a little whiteboard that says, you know, there'll be a hearing on this date and this time. And I just wonder if that would, you know, it seems like a simple enough um, idea and whether it would generate more interest in people coming forward for demolition hearings, if that's something that we're interested in. So I would assume, Antonia, maybe you would want to engage with Nate to, to talk about whether the town would be up for something like that. Is that, am I on the right track, Nate? Yeah. You know, if it, depending on size, it could be like a temporary sign that goes in the pub, you know, the public right of way. The difficulty is, you know, would a private property owner let us, you know, put on their building, for instance, so that it advertises. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think that's something we could talk about. Right. Yeah. The um, I thought you actually meant signage too after the fact, and so you know, Ed Wilford had said with with this site and property, he would like it if there was interpretive material. And for instance, what if there was a, you know, um, something akin to like the writer's walk sign put somewhere or you know, some mention of it in a lobby, maybe a picture and just some something. And so, you know, it, you know, for down the road, I mean, we can't make all these conditions for every project, but, you know, it, it's something to consider. What do we want to have in terms of public record or what's visible to the public? But for what you're asking, yeah, let's, you know, we can send emails and figure out how right. to do that. So we could, I'm even thinking we'd print something on like a quarter or half inch vinyl and it could be, you know, 24 by 36 or, whatever size and um and then you know it could be moved around or I, I, i'll have to talk to the building commissioner and others about kind of logistics but yeah yeah and tony i can help with that i think i'm i'm your okay. teammate with that one perfect i was thinking we could share just sort of like examples of other cities Tell yeah i think it'd be helpful to have as you know part of the request yeah i, I mean i I'm not sure what I hope would what we would get out of it. I mean, maybe one aspect would be just um, you know, more salvage, you know, who knows? Who knows what might happen? But it does seem like um it's a, I think it's always shocking for somebody to see something coming down and not have known it was coming down. <laughs> so for that, for that alone. <laughs> okay. Um so I think we're done with discussion in that area. Um, 
Foreign Tourism Assessment. I have not made progress on that. Apologies. I'm going to try to do something for the next meeting. Um, Macros inventory forms and demolitions. Um, Nate, I had a question. I know uh, I'm working with Hetty. I'm trying to find a really efficient way to pull together resources. Um, and I know that um, there are certain prohibitions in terms of open meeting law with like shared Google documents and things like that. Um, I was trying to figure out if I could share a OneDrive just to, or like a Dropbox because I find it a little, uh, I find it overwhelming and, you know, things kind of get lost to have to kind of have everything come into my email and sort things out and file them. So um, that would be my question. Um, and, and in terms of like, if I wanted to lead you know, a group at my house on, you know, how to use ancestry.com or, you know, deed research, you know, just to like do a quick lesson for commissioners. Like, do I have to keep below quorum or um, what are the rules there? Yeah. So I think that, um, you know, the local historic district has used or study committee, the local historic district study committee, we've used shared files and we do have an opinion from the state that says, you know, information sharing is not a violation of open meetings. So, you know, as long as we're not conversing uh, online outside of a public meeting, so that, you know, something like a completing an inventory form could be shared with the whole commission, resources can be shared. The, what we couldn't have happen is, you know, um, say before or, you know, have comment happen on what we think is why the building's significant in terms of, say, a proposed demolition of it. So, it could be that, you know, you're doing bibliog, you know, research, you have some, you know, references and you have a bibliography going and then, you know, you're like, oh, I need some, you know, let's, let's research the owner history a little bit more. And then Hetty does some research and then, you know, you know, someone else chimes in and that's all fine. The, the, um, that's what we've done with the study committee. They complete inventory forms online in a, in a report The you know, we just can't be then having conversations about, you know, why we wouldn't issue a delay or something, you know, we can complete okay. the inventory form. That's fine. Uh, uh -huh. Same with um, the, the ancestry piece. I think, you know, if you wanted, we could do it over Zoom. It could be a public meeting and we post it and we, you share a screen. Or I think, you know, to me, that's just information sharing. It could just be that maybe it's a, a sub quorum of members and, you know, you could uh, walk them through it. But again, to me, that's, there's nothing there. So to me, that's fine. That's not a violation of open meeting law at all. You know, unless okay. you know, like you're talking about something under the commission's jurisdiction, specifically an amorous of property or something, but okay, okay. Um, and then what? Um, how is the local historic district doing file sharing? What are they using? I'm just curious. Yeah, so the town we can't use Dropbox anymore. It's uh, it's actually um, a, a, an insecure. Okay. Well, from the town's perspective, an, an insecure yeah, yep. file sharing system. Yeah. And so we do uh, share drive or one drive. Um, that's the Microsoft. Right. So, I mean, if the commission wanted to set up a Dropbox for themselves, I can always access it at, it at home and then, you know, okay. and put the information in, on my OneDrive. Uh, so it's really whatever is say comfortable with commissioners, you know, could be Google, you know, whatever. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll look into that because that would be good and helpful. Um, does anybody have any thoughts around uh, max inventory at this point or other questions about our one and five year goals i was gonna say 45 to 55 south pleasant i you know we, i've been emailing with the attorney tom reedy and we're trying to set up a site visit and so i'll just you know i don't know if, i don't know if we robin i mean your availability is probably important so if you want to set up a poll again or if i could and we could just i think they said any time right i think it's like any time for them so it's really a matter of when you know, commissioners are able to make it. And so. Okay. Uh, so who among us wants to go? That would be the first question. Hetty, me, Madeline. Okay. Nate, do you want to be there? Or do we need to? Yeah, no, yeah, I'd like to be there. I'd like to, um, you know, I've, we, we met with them. Uh, it's, you know, Barry Roberts and Tom Reedy. I don't know, last week, week and a half ago about something else, but I brought this up at the end of the meeting. And you know, I said, you know, we still want a structures report. We like one on both buildings, or at least the back one. There's one on the front one. Uh -huh. uh, and they said, yes. And I said, interior photographs, exterior photographs. And it sounds like they were willing to do that. You know, I also like to get in there and just look and, you know. Okay. Yeah. 
do you want to send me um some dates and times start we'll start with your schedule I mean, I'm, um I'm I mean kind of, not... mm -hmm. go ahead I mean, I'm around, so I, I feel like Robin. It's I think it'd be up to you and Hetty. So whenever you're available, um, right. and Alan, yeah. Alan, what's good for you generally? I mean, I live so close by, so I, um, just during the the four four o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll do that. Yeah. And then, okay. the, yeah, and I just want to say, Hetty, the public artwork. The one of the artists, or maybe two artists, um, you know, some of those were painted fairly recently. They, they've said that they they knew that when they painted them, that there could always be a possibility that they wouldn't exist there. But I guess they're willing to repaint some elsewhere, or put them on another building. That's, that's what I've heard. Uh, I think Tom mentioned at the hearing, and it was mentioned again. So it's something that we could follow up with. Great. Um. Okay, and so that's that. Um, so uh, agenda item four, um, I'm going to hand over to Madeline because this touches on, I think, MHC issues. It's um, discussion of a proposed carriage house at the Evergreens and a vote for a letter of support. So I will mute myself and my camera and uh, have Madeline take over the meeting. Okay. Um, so, Nathan, Nate, can you tell me a little bit more about this? Yeah, the commission, uh, I don't know, you thought you emailed it out, but, you know, the commission had seen it the last meeting and said it looked good. Um, you know, the Evergreens or the Dickens Museum is proposing to rebuild, rebuild a, a carriage house at the Evergreen site, trying to mimic what was there. It, it um, had been torn down maybe in the mid 20th century and so yeah use it for classroom space and other you know um uh you know eventually um but you know they've really gone through the trouble of trying to document it with you know there's a few photographs and other things um you know we didn't have a necessarily a quorum at the last meeting we felt stronger if there would be at least four members that could vote you know uh, in support of a letter to the massachusetts historical commission and so you know, they'll, they have a deed restriction on the property or a restriction on the property. So Mass Historic will have to review it. The local historic uh, will ha district will have to review it. And it might even get, you know, pushed up to the National Park Service. And so they wanted a letter from the commission in support of the work. And, you know, I think that there were some questions the commission asked, but really it was, you know, they're, they've done a really uh, fair amount of research on this. And so there weren't too many questions. Uh, I think most people were really really supportive of it okay um so do we have let's see do we have a how so what what are we reviewing where do i is there somebody presenting no it was already suspect? presented so this is just really okay. just to get the vote okay all right well so I would I would move. Right. Can I move that we support the Emily Dickinson Museum's proposals for the? Is it a reconstruction? I think it's a historic reconstruction. Yeah, of yeah, that's, the, yeah that's how they're calling it. On okay. at the Evergreens, and will write a letter of support to the Mass Historical Commission with I second that do we need a okay. roll call vote, vote? Yeah. I'm not sure how that works we do I think we need <laughs> any discussion and then a, a roll call yeah, vote. That's right. yes discussion first okay um are there any kind of comments or questions that you want to clarify or do we just feel strongly um, in support of this letter. Strongly. Yeah. OK. <laughs> All right, we'll have a roll call then. Um, let's see, Hetty? Yes. Yes. Antonia? Yeah. Michaela? Yes. And I, I am also yes. So that's everybody. 
Great. That's all we needed. That was great. And I, Rob, uh, sorry, Matt, I thought that okay. the, I did go through the YouTube that you sent, and I didn't see the presentation on the the Emily Dickinson barn. So, yeah, it's funny. I was sorry, I'm trying I'm to move my email right now to, to find uh, to find it, and you know what? Um, they shared it, and I asked them. I don't think they ever sent it. Um, trying to, I can't, for whatever reason, oh, I'm not. Well, I yeah, I looked online at their designs, so. I'm yeah. sport. And um, Madeline will be the signatory for that letter, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was okay. like, Madeline, you and I can work on that letter. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. Um, next item, public comment. Are there any members of the public who would like to con comment at this point in time? Please raise your electronic hand and you shall be recognized. No, nope. there's nobody oh. here. <laughs> no, nope, I think Hilda just left. <laughs> okay, uh, seeing no public comment, I move on to unanticipated items. I think we're done with unanticipated items, unless something's come up in the last hour. <laughs> well, the only thing I was going to uh, mention was a resident emailed to ask about the signs at West Cemetery. So a while ago, we had worked on an interpretive sign for the mural, and then maybe entry signs for the cemetery. Mm -hmm. We had kind of tabled it until the town's wayfinding sign system was designed. I think we had some designs, you know, and I, I stopped working with the commission. We had a different planner and then uh, he's since left with the town. So I, I was going to try to pick that up again, but I just wanted to, you know, bring that to your attention that I think it's something we could um, try to move forward with. I thought we had kind of, I you know, identified a type of sign we wanted for the mural. And so what we had been doing in the past was printing these paper brochures for the mural. We'd go through like hundreds in a summer. I mean, sometimes like 200 would go, would vanish in a week. I don't know if they were actually being taken by tourists or you know, used for other purposes, but it became they're, a they're available at the bid. Um, yeah. I was actually remembering when I first came on the commission that we had a discussion about using goats or sheep to right. clear the, some of the areas of the most historic graves well, you know, and that wasn't something we were able to act on, but um, I, I'm I'm all for this. Yeah, I, I I got I have my own paper copy, um, but I think some other way of connecting information about the mural would be wonderful. Yeah. So are we looking at bringing those sign review of those signs back? I think so. Yeah, and and, and um, the development um, Eleven East Pleasant there the developer had agreed to either help with the cost of designing them or installing them. And I was just going to revisit that, <clears throat> excuse me, but I think it could be a future agenda item. And yeah, I also like the idea of sheep <laughs> in the cemetery and it was always expensive and there's liability and insurance issues. But I, I mean, I think it'd be, I, I don't know. I feel like at some point it'd be nice to look into that again. I know uh, Pat had just the other year and you know, I know yeah. other communities are doing it. So maybe, maybe we'll, you know, we can make it work. I know the public works department actually thought it was a good idea too, because, you know, in the older section of the cemetery, the stones are irregular and the spacing isn't adequate enough for a, for a mower. And so it actually is, it's actually a lot of work to maintain it. And so, um, yeah. I, I, I dangerous it, for the stones, yes. you know, yeah. that they could get dinged. Yeah. I know. I, I don't know why it's so it's so hard. <laughs> I actually looked at <laughs> I, I looked at goats from my yard. Um, I have a for one section. It's all it's like bittersweet and invasives. And I was like, oh, this isn't. A, this is a few years ago. Like, oh, it won't be too bad. And I was actually surprised at the cost of it to rent a dozen goats. And then it was my responsibility to provide them water and food three times a day, and then move their fencing every few days. And I said, well, you know, I'm like, well. Mm -hmm what is the owner, what is the company doing? Basically, they just drop them off and then it was, you know. Yeah, they're supporting them the rest of the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like the idea. Then to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, yeah. But we can revisit that. Yeah, I think so. I'd like the signs in the goats or the sheep would be great to revisit. 
Yeah, yeah, okay. Anything else, anybody? Okay. Good. Uh, in that case, we need to reschedule to schedule our next meeting. Month of March. Um, how do people feel about the eleventh? Yep. Or the eighteenth? Actually, I prefer the eighteenth, but it's a little bit. The eleventh would be better. Okay. Well, that's right. You guys are. Are you guys on spring break then? Yeah, the eighteenth is spring break. Yeah. Yep. You could have a real background. Are you going somewhere that? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm currently abroad, so. Oh. I'm abroad. Oh. Yeah. Yes, I. Where are you? you? I'm in Spain. Cool. Nice. Great. Madrid, Barcelona. Yeah. Madrid. Oh, best, best. Yeah. So jealous. <laughs> I really, it's on my bucket list. That's great. Oh, it's really late there, isn't it? Yeah, it's super late. <laughs> thank you for joining, for joining us <laughs> thank you very much everybody <laughs> so, is um, it, so the 11th is it works for everybody yep yeah okay, that, well, might, that could also work as uh the demolition hearing too if um okay if, yeah i mean i read through the the um you know the emergency demolition provisions you know the building commissioner has to deem it you know kind of in structural um deficiency that it becomes an emergency and it might be that although this house was damaged by fire it's not it doesn't reach the level of an emergency demolition and so then we'd have to be we could either just let it run out you know there's a constructive approval if we don't act or we could try to make the 11th the hearing so i yeah uh, okay. I mean, it, yeah okay so um okay so the 11th at 6 30 will be our next meeting and we'll hopefully um, Pat can join us. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Rob Benford. Everything. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Great to have you, Madeline. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. See you next month, everybody. Bye.